everybody. My name is Sally. Welcome back to another episode of Debunking DID. This is going to be part three of the All About Alters series. So if you haven't seen parts one and two, hopefully with some movie magic, Chloe will be able to link them above or below. Somewhere in this video, you'll be able to find the links to the other two videos. This video is going to be about non-human alters and fictives. I find DID to be a very fantastical disorder. I've heard of people comparing it to being a superhero and something that may sound on the surface to be too good to be true. Obviously there's a lot that goes on underneath the surface that a lot of people don't know about and these are just the most positive comments that we've heard personally, whether on YouTube or in real life. One thing that can make people think that DID isn't real or that it's made up is when people hear about alters who are animals or non-human. Now, animal alters and non-human alters are just as valid, just as real and just as needed as any other alter in a system. I will explain to you why animal alters and non-human alters are created by a child's mind. Someone who doesn't believe in DID or is skeptical of DID may look at this disorder and think it's just somebody who is childish or has possibly lost part of their childhood who wants to keep a hold of it by pretending to be an animal or pretending to be something magical because real life is dull and boring. That's not the case. You have to remember that when it comes to dissociative identity disorder, most of the alters, unless they were made later on in life due to more stressful events or another trauma, all these alters were created by a child's mind. These alters were what a child felt they needed and children enjoy watching shows and they love animals and stuffed toys and fantastical ideas and books and films that expand the limits of reality beyond our own. Why might a child connect with an animal or something non-human like a fairy or a dragon in a way that would cause an alter to take that form? I'm going to put a trigger warning for abuse here because I will be talking about the kinds of abuse of children that may be physical, may be sexual, that could result in the formation of a non-human alter. I'm sure some of you know, but for those of you who don't, DID is not the splitting of the mind. It is due to trauma, the, the beginning parts of the personality that are beginning to form into one whole personality that is completely its own and completely full and connected. But due to trauma, this is prevented and the brain is unable to fully coalesce the personality into just one. So you end up with multiple that mature at their own rates and experience different parts of life, whether that be trauma or not. So a child who is experiencing horrendous abuse to the point where they feel they may not survive it, whether that is due to extreme physical harm, sexual deprivational acts or mental or emotional scarring they are going to want to separate themselves from that experience. What could survive this experience? Because I cannot. I am just a child, a human child, and what is happening to me is too much to bear and too much to survive. I need to be something else. I need something else to experience this trauma for me, something stronger, something that can allow us to live. And what do children associate with strength and power and resilience? Dragons. Dragons are strong. 
they can breathe fire, they might be able to fight back, they can fly away, just like fairies. They can fly away, they are magical, they are healing, stronger than humans. The same thing with vampires and anything that a child has seen or heard of and feels a connection with and at that moment in time they think, God, I wish I was this, I wish I was this, I wish that I was something else, anything else and then this wouldn't be happening to me or if it was happening to me anyway I would be able to survive it but right now I feel like I'm going to die. That's why magical and non-human altars are created. In terms of animal altars there are some specific types of abuse that may force an animal altar to be created or make it more likely that a child will create an animal altar to deal with the trauma that they're experiencing. In this part of the video I'm going to give you some examples of certain types of animals and why that it is a possibility that they were created due to the types of abuse that the child was experiencing at that time. Please do forgive me, I am going to be entirely unable to include every type of animal altar, every type of non-human altar in this video, but it does apply to all when I say that animal altars, non-human altars and fictives, which I will be talking about in the last part of this video, should be accepted as they are. They are no less real, as I have already said, and they are no less valid, and they are no less worthy of your love and exception. Altars such as dog altars may have been created when a child who was abused, it is not unusual for children who are abandoned or neglected to be starved or to be tied up, to be kept in cages, to be locked in cupboards, to be forced to eat unpleasant food, whether this is leftovers, dog food, animal food, mush, in specific types of abuse where it's intentional rather than accidental. The abuse can be forced upon the child to act like a dog, to be told that they must return to the abuser, to have to do everything the abuser says, to be loyal to the abuser like a dog, to possibly wear a collar or some form of identification, to even be on a leash so that they are in no way able to escape from the abuser or from the, the, area, the area of abuse. Some children are forced to eat out of dog bowls, uh, forced to walk around on all fours because it is humiliating, other things like that. Other children may create animal altars because they feel they have been forced to do something that no human should do. It is not unusual that within cults and ritual abuse or just any kind of abuse really for a child to be forced to continue the abusive acts that are being forced onto them to another child or to choose perhaps either you continue to suffer this treatment again and again or you can choose it to happen to another child instead. Actions like this have a huge rift in the mind of the morality of a child, these huge decisions that would be difficult for an adult to do, let alone a child who has already been abused, who is already in this state of disbelief, shock, pain, hurt, desperation and depression. They feel like in order to survive this abuse, they must act as less than human, as aggressive, violent, like an animal because this is not them, this is not their choice. They could not live with the morality of this decision that they have been forced to make and therefore it is put onto something that may have less morality such as an animal, a wild animal. Again, these altars often have strong protective traits and are very resilient and powerful like tigers and wolves and um, any other strong, powerful, animalistic creature that could carry out the more unpleasant sides of being 
an abused and an abuser, not by the fault of the child. But Excuse me, I'm very hungry right now. That was my stomach. <laughs> you may think, what about animals that seem to have no particular need to be that animal? Something that is not obvious, like a dog or a wolf or a fairy or a dragon, something like a reptile or an insect or a snake. A child may feel like they cannot escape their trauma, cannot escape their abuser and need to be small, need to be hidden, need to be somewhere that they cannot be found just for a minute and that creates a very small altar, very quiet altar who may be able to calm down the, the abuser and minimize the abuse, may be able to hide in certain times when it is necessary that could create alters even like a fly, anything like that, anything is possible. I've never come across a, a fly alter myself, but I have come across a system who has a snake alter. They were tricked into believing that they had had their limbs removed due to their trauma. They were uh, victims of uh, electric shock and they were very confused and they had their arms and legs bound together. Now these arms and legs bound together and being very confused and very dissociated and very, very afraid. And they were told, you have had your legs removed. You have had your arms removed. And what has no limbs and has to crawl along the floor? A snake. And to deal with that experience, they created an altar that was a snake. So you see, it may seem ridiculous to some people and absolutely crazy that an altar could be an animal or a dragon or a fairy or something non-human and unusual, but there is a reason for it. They should be treated as, as human as the other altars but respected as for what they are. It can be very, very difficult. You may have noticed a change in my accent throughout this video. I'm extremely dissociated. And when I began this video, I was co-conscious with an altar called Amira. You can hear her accent coming through. Um, and we are sort of yo-yoing back and forth right now. Um, I'm not entirely sure who has the most control, but I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a switch. I'm going to leave the camera rolling because it's Chloe's choice what she wants to put on YouTube. He had a lot of positive comments and thankful appreciation when we uploaded the video including our switch last time. People saying that it helped them come to terms with it and that it made them feel less embarrassed and it normalized it and that they wished we would do more and that there were more people showing the switches. I can hear people in the kitchen and there was a really loud bang and it has disturbed excited to do a video that was mine. I'm very much looking forward to my Meet the Altars video. Our Meet the Altars video. Whoever is here. I don't know if you can hear the noises downstairs.
Damn it. Why does everything always have to be wonky? <laughs> Hello everybody. Um, I just had a look at the camera and it looks like someone's been filming. I don't know how far they got, but obviously there was a switch. I don't know whether I'll keep it in. I'm going to watch it first and then make a decision because um, even though we uploaded our switching before, it can be very a pr private experience, just something that can be quite personal to the system. So I'm gonna check before if it's in, then tell us what you think. Would you always like us to leave our switches in the footage or are you not so interested in that? How do you feel about it? And hopefully <laughs> whoever was filming got to a point where they could stop and were happy with it. If not, then don't worry. I will be continuing it after I've edited this. I'm also going to film a video of my own. Oh, this this is Chloe, by the way. Sorry, hi, Chloe. <laughs> I run the Dissociated channel. Um, I'm usually the one who films. I'm assuming, because I've got uh, the number on our list here, that whoever was filming was filming the Alters part three video. If there's anything that's been left out or anything that um, I'm going to or was intending to include, then I'm going to film a part four. If not, then this is the final part to this series, unless I decide to continue it. If you have any questions or anything like that, please let us know and I will do my best to answer. And um, yeah, don't forget to check out the videos one and two. Stay tuned for more content. And we are nearing 2000 subscribers already, which is absolutely insane. So. If you're interested in another live stream to celebrate that when we hit it, please do let us know. Uh, you. And what times would be best for you, things like that. BST, please, British Standard Time, so we can work out a way to chat with as many people as possible, especially the people who weren't able to join our live stream last time because we missed you. And also, I'm starting a little art project. I have decided to do a little a little thing <laughs> for more mental health awareness and DID awareness as well as body positivity. And I've started creating little artworks and designs and logos to put on t-shirts, stickers, phone cases, whatever you want, just to promote body positivity and self-love and self-care and healing and mental health awareness. So if you'd be interested in checking out our Redbubble shop, not necessarily to buy something, but even just to have a look and see um, if you can give us some feedback or what you think about the designs, then yeah, I'll link that below. You can find us at Dissociated on Redbubble and Instagram and Facebook. So please do follow us so you know when we're uploading and what's going on in our lives and we can have a little chat with you if you like. Um, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.